What's up guys? Before we jump into this video, I have a small, quick, short message to share with you all. So over the past couple of months, I have been blessed with the opportunity to volunteer alongside a sweet elderly woman. She has been diagnosed with scoliosis and um, she is actually facing financial struggles and it hits close to home for me because my little sister, she actually is diagnosed with scoliosis and it's sometimes it's hard to be able to stand up for long periods of time and it's painful. And me and my family actually went through financially a couple of years ago. So if you guys would please go down to the description box below and click on the GoFundMe link. It will take you directly to the page. You can either share the link with all of your friends and family on social media, or you can donate. And another way that you can donate, you can also go down to the description box below and donate to Ms. Joyce personally through her cash app. Please do check that out below. I also have it here on the screen. And I hope you guys have a wonderful Christmas and let's go ahead and jump into this video. Look nice, don't it? Hey everyone, my name is Taija and welcome to my channel. So today for this video, I will be talking about how I became a philanthropist at the age of 15. So in this video, I'll be pretty much sharing my journey of how I fell in love with just helping people and giving back to the community. So the very first time that I started volunteering and giving back to the community was whenever I was in high school. And I believe it was my sophomore year to be exact, I believe. It was either my freshman or sophomore. And I was part of the NJROTC. And um, pretty much the N stands for uh, Navy. If any of you out there uh, did pretty much like armed services kind of stuff whenever you was in high school and you joined those type of uh, groups, uh, you know exactly what I'm talking about. We had to serve 41 hours. We had to go somewhere within the metro area or just in Mississippi in general, pick a place that we wanted to go to and to give back to the community and volunteer. So I chose to go to PetSmart. And since I just love animals, as you can see right here, I love animals. And um, I decided to go help over there at PetSmart. I volunteered there under CARA. I can't exactly remember what it stands for, but it is a uh, organization that pretty much like protects the animals and gives them homes and helps them get adopted. So I volunteered under CARA and I used to go in the very back of the store. I used to take care of the cats that they had there. I cleaned out their cages, replaced their water, replaced the food if it was old. Um, I also swept back there as well. Just pretty much kept the area clean. And I think I did it pretty much every single day after school to earn hours as much as I could. And the best part was I could actually go there at the same time every single day because my dad actually worked at PetSmart during the time. I had lots of fun actually doing it. There was actually this one cat that I took care of. He looked just like Garfield. It was creepy. <laughs> but uh, the only difference is the cat wasn't orange. I volunteered back there, did all that stuff, and I earned my 41 hours. And that's when I really started to uh, get into volunteering. After that, I got into uh, volunteering with my, my church. And my dad, he's actually an ordained pastor. And we had a church out of our own house. We didn't have like an actual like building for our church. When my dad was an ordained pastor. We actually had church inside of our home. And our neighbors used to come by and we would have a church in our home. I would sing, um, praise dance as well, which is why I just love dancing to this day and do like K-pop dance covers. We had lots of fun. We had a joyous time while we was in our home celebrating God and just worshiping Him and just being in God's Word in general. While I was there, my mom, she actually formed a dance team and it was called Word of Change Ministries Praise Dance Team. 
So my mom, one Saturday, she took me and the other members to the Mississippi Food Network. And we went over there and we actually packed boxes of food. And at the time, I didn't know that they would send like food out outside of the state. You'll get what I'm saying after I explain it. So we packed boxes of food one Saturday. We was having fun, making sure they were they were good to go, having everything in it, vegetables, fruits, um, maybe even canned meats if there was anything in there. Try to make sure that they have every single food group within the boxes. My mom checked it, as well as the people that was there, they checked it, as well as the weight. Sometimes they would take stuff out just in case it was like too heavy because I know that they had to travel with it and there was a certain weight that they could carry. And then after that, we went home. I actually do have a picture of us on that day, the bottom of the screen of the video. While we were sitting there watching the national news, keeping in mind, this is national news, we looked and we saw that they said that, okay, uh, there were a few boxes that came from the US that um, were packed. I don't know which country it was, but it was in Asia, it was hit by a tsunami. So that country was hit by a tsunami and we knew of course that they needed food, supplies, just regular basic things that we do need our own homes to be able to survive day to day. Tell me why I looked down at the boxes and it had the same design, the same design on the boxes that we packed here in Jackson, Mississippi. When I tell you I was so shocked, my mom, she told me this. She was like, Taja, I said, what? She said, those are the boxes that we packed. I said, are you serious? She said, yes. I was like, oh my God. That moment for me, was really, really important because that's what really launched me into loving and loving to give back to others. And the fact that a girl from Mississippi has enough, like to be able to reach across the globe, not even physically, but just, just by simply doing one thing, just packing boxes. The fact that I had a hand in helping others from across the world, it made a difference. That day really did touch my heart. And ever since that day, I have loved giving back to others. And even in my own way, there were many other ways that I gave back to others after my years of being in high school. So during my junior year in college, um, as of August, 2017, as soon as my parents dropped me off on the campus, I and my family were officially homeless. For one whole year, we were homeless. And the thing is, prior and beforehand, we have been homeless before. Um, pretty much that was our fourth time being homeless. And this one was the most challenging and the most difficult. Having knowledge that I am officially homeless, being on campus, trying to earn my bachelor's degree, it was, it was stressful. Uh, even though I had friends and organizations that I joined to be able to have an outlet to be able to be positive and, and to stay out of like depression mode because of what I was going through at home. Me taking 16 hours and really not being able to tell people about what is going on. I was pretty much new on campus. Nobody knew. I didn't know. Uh, I didn't know anybody at the time to be able to like vocalize it to and to be able to be able to talk to about about it. My parents didn't have enough money for me to be able to pay for my uh, phone bill to be able to like talk to them over over the phone, text them, all that jazz. So I ended up using my laptop to contact them. I think I used an app called Google Voice. And um, because of the campus having Wi-Fi, I was able to call them and, and text them back and forth as much as I could. So pretty much my laptop that I still have to this day um, is, was my cell phone. I kept it around me 24 seven, checked up on it just to make sure my parents didn't call me or anything like that. That laptop was my lifeline for my major, as well as me being able to communicate between me and my parents. The majority of the year that I was at USM, I had to stay on campus. I was practically by myself. The only time that I could really hear their voice and see them is unless they had to pick me up when we had to move completely off campus because of summer coming up and we and since I wasn't taking like intercession classes and things like that. I've only seen my parents pretty much twice 
that year. During that time, my dad, he was ill. He was very sick. It was at his worst, though, because he, he became sick when I was 16 years old. My dad was so skinny. He lost so much weight. And on top of that, every single day we had to, and my parents, really my parents had to choose in between filling up the gas tank or eating food. And the thing is, all of us was going through it, including my little sister, and she had school to worry about too. My parents and my little sister, they ended up staying with my grandmother. And they were about three hours away from me. Um, and they stayed in Rolling Fork, Mississippi with my grandmother. They stayed with her there and constantly they got up around like 3, 4 a.m. in the morning. My parents and my little sister, would, they would get in the car. My dad would drop my mom off at work um, in Canton. And they would make, they would pass through uh, a little bit of Clinton. I believe my, my little sister was going to um, Sumner Hill at the time. My mom was the only one working, but she decided to work very hard and to pay for my education when my dad was sick and he wasn't able to work. And my dad, even though he was sick, he supported me. He supported me to the fullest. And my little sister, she did too. She was cheering off to the side being weird <laughs> and sending me weird text messages. <laughs> The only two people that I know of that helped my family out is my grandmother and my uncle that actually do, did not stay too far from me. And it was my dad's half brother, uh, Uncle Tommy, if you watch this video. So. <laughs> Him and his wife, they are golden. They are wonderful. They helped me out while I was at USM. They made sure that I was fed. It was really stressful on me. I was stressing out with my grades. Some of my classes, they, they kind of, some of them kind of flopped a little bit. Luckily, my GPA stayed at a B average and I kept pushing with God's grace. But those little things that were happening during our time of trials and tribulations, those are what kept me going. My friends that I had, oh, I appreciate them. Lord Jesus, me and them are still friends to this day. Lord G. Ashley, if you're watching this, I love you. Sanitha, if you're watching this, I love you. Miracle, if you're watching this, I love you. <laughs> the whole squad that was with us on campus, I love y'all. <laughs> I can't name, can't name every single person, but I love y'all. And I pray that y'all watch, I hope that y'all watching this video. Marcus, I love you too. And y'all really did kept me smiling and kept me going. And y'all took care of me while I was on that campus as well. That year was really, really hard for us. And I thank God for him blessing us with the home that I'm sitting in right now. With this room that I'm sitting in right now. He blessed us on November 2018 with this home. I have my own room. I have hot water to bathe myself. I actually have food that I can eat. And my parents and my little sister have food and they can eat. My journey of going through, even before college, has shaped me to be selfless and to help another person that is in need. That's why I am who I am today. And why I want to open up a community center for kids to be able to come and, and express themselves in various types of art. My journey has shaped me. It really has. And God had me go through it for a reason. I can literally survive with a little, and I can literally survive with a lot. I thank him for helping me and guiding me and leading me when I was on my own that year. Even when my physical parents was a, wasn't able to be there, even when my uncle and aunt was able, wasn't able to be there, even when my grandmother wasn't able to be there, he was there for me. He was there for me 24-7, 365 days that year. That's pretty much everything about my journey, as well as why I ended up becoming a philanthropist. So if you made it to the very end of this video, you're straight G. What's up? I have a big announcement. So, the big announcement is I am officially a AmeriCorp service member. And in addition to that, I am now even more of an entrepreneur and I am a freelance video editor. Yay! <laughs> Actually, as an AmeriCorps member, I tutor third and fourth graders 
in Jackson, Mississippi, underneath America Reads Mississippi, as well as AmeriCorps. And I tutored the children like Monday through Friday, um, for a, like until like eight from eight a.m. to later. It's really fun to me because I got to know the children so much, and they love me to death. I swear, like literally, if you were there with me, they like Tasha, they wear out your knees. Yes, they do. In October. I became a freelance video editor officially. I plan on making myself a Fiverr account so I can be able to offer services, pretty much like video editing, uh, things on YouTube for people, if they have like a celebratory video they want me to do, just things like that and I, and I do charge for it. Um, so if you guys are interested and would like to have any of your videos edited, just make sure to contact me down below. I'll leave my email and of course right here instagram just con contact me on either one of those so thank you guys for watching my video and merry christmas and happy new year from buttons Yay! some good water.